If there's one thing people around the office know me for, it's that I wear driving gloves. <laughs> I don't wear driving gloves anymore, but I do like Logitech and I do like cars. So this could be a very interesting combo. This is a $1,000 racing wheel and a $350 set of pedals from a company whose last racing wheel was like 300 bucks with both. The market for direct drive wheels like this has really been going up with Fanatec, CSLDD. I think Thrustmaster just launched one a couple days ago, so it'll be interesting to see how this performs because at the price point, this is a hefty ask, but I can't wait to check out what's inside. Unlike the Thrustmaster or the Fanatec options, Logitech is selling this as a kit. So when you get the wheel, which I assume is this thing. Okay, cool, cool. This is impressive, okay. The $1,000 price point, I'm kinda starting to feel it, all right. The previous generation Logitech wheel, eh. It was a good way to get into racing games, but not very well built. This, uh, by contrast, feels really nice. Nice buttons, these paddles. Click the paddle, David, click the, click the paddle. It feels pretty good, but it's not clear if you're gonna be able to buy separate wheels. I imagine because there is a quick disconnect on the back of here, then you can take this on and off that they will sell other cool branded wheels. That's okay, this thing is massive. The nice thing about the Fanatec option is it's pretty compact. This is a bit of a chungus. It's 15 pounds, power cable and a Chungus power brick. 300 watts, wow. Ah, that looks like a table mount, good. Ah, man, these table clamps are always underwhelming. This is a thousand dollar product and it's just like, it's a plastic screw and plastic housing. I mean, realistically, if you're using a wheel like this, you probably shouldn't mount it to your desk. You probably got some sort of like a wheel frame or something, but this is a little disappointing on first glance. Yeah, okay, cool, little cover. It's got little like ball bearing things to hold it in place. Now let's try this. Okay, it works. Wow, it, it really does work. <laughs> it feels cheap, but it does work. In terms of the wheel, we got our X, Y, A, B, left trigger, right trigger. Since this is the Xbox version, there is a PlayStation version. They're the same price. They do both work for PC. So if you play on PC, you're welcome to buy whatever version you like. On the inside there, there's four pins. Those are gonna connect to four little contacts on our quick disconnect. It's keyed so you can't put it in the wrong way. So make sure you line that up. And then you wanna pull this back. Hmm. Fanatec lets you spin it infinitely, there's no stops. This one does have stops, but they are both direct drive. This does use Hall Effect sensors, so it's not gonna wear down any potentiometers or anything like that. And it does feel nice and smooth. It does have their True Force tech, which when they described it to me, it's kind of like, it's almost like having a speaker in the steering wheel that gives you these finer inputs, at least on their older wheels. Because this one's direct drive and it's just a big motor, I imagine that feedback is also probably just done by the motor. Um, we'll have to see how that feels. Oh, I forgot, there's a little OLED display on here. Wow, that is tiny. It's gotta be like this big, little OLED display there. Oh, that's lame. On the back of this for connectivity, they just have a bunch of USB-A ports, like the OG style, like USB 2.0 type A ports. There's a micro USB, which is lame. In 2022, this should be type C. At the very least, they have made this a molded cable and you can see that it matches the profile of the inside of that. So once you push this in, it's not really gonna be affected by side to side force, but you could very well, you know, rip it out this way and these little prongs on the micro B port are gonna wear down over time. Now the type A ports aren't gonna be protected from left and right movement. So if you do wire this up, man, maybe just get, put some cable strain reliefs or something because I can see someone very easily damaging this. Oh, it's not even like tight fitting. Like, <sighs> kind of disappointing on a thousand dollar device. Hopefully the performance still lives up to it. There's stuff in here. Ooh, this looks promising so far. I'm seeing a lot of metal, that's good. Buying pedals that are plastic and you get a ton of flex. These feel pretty good though. This is 350 bucks. This feels like a lot better value than this steering wheel, but I mean, I guess we'll see. The thing I always find with like racing pedal clutches is they're always super linear. It's just like a lever when in real life, your clutch will kind of, you'll feel the point at which it disengages and engages. The brake pedal is load cell, which is cool. And the gas, it's okay for gas to just be a lever because in a real car, that's what it is. 
Okay. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Replacement springs, cool. And look at that, replacement brake. Um, foam, I don't know what you call these, rubbers, brake rubbers. Let's see, I wanna make the, okay, all right. Actually, that came out really easily. Did I just get it stuck now? Oh, God. There we go. Okay, it's a bit tight. You tighten the thing and then it's good. Oops. So when you're pressing the pedal, at first you feel the compression of this soft foam, and then you kind of hit a wall, which would be this much harder rubber. There's probably a couple different presets they give you, like, yeah, there you go. They give you a chart, so you can replace the pieces, A and B, and then you're always gonna have one of these. They're not really labeled, though. They are kind of labeled. Does that look like a label? Ah, man, okay, Logitech, again, colors. If the system is colors, does that look like the same brown? And you could almost say that that's the yellow. Maybe it's these are the natural colors of these materials, but make sure that the color in your manual matches, or at the very least, dye them so that they look really different so you can't screw this up. Okay, we can also switch the springs. Yeah, okay, that one's white, so that's the lightest one. This one is brown. The clutch pedal has red, which is the second heaviest, and the gas has yellow, which is the second lightest. Let me put these on my feet and see how they feel. Man, playing a racing game without a cockpit, kind of lame. Who has room for a cockpit? I do. They did a reasonable job with the rubber kind of anti-slide stuff. Obviously, when you're getting into it, you're still gonna be pushing the pedals forward. I think my gas pedal is a little too firm and the clutch is a little too soft. So I might swap those. They feel pretty good though. There is a bit of play left and right. Not only are the pedals themselves moving, but the actual like metal piece that holds them in place, like kind of the channel that they're in, is also flexing quite a bit. I don't know if it's because the rest of it is plastic. What's holding that metal piece in is plastic. Oh cool, the pedals are adjustable. You can slide each pedal around as much as you want. You can also adjust the pedal faces themselves. You see that we're using these holes right now, but you could move them over here, or over here, or up there, anywhere you want. Interesting, they are modular, which is cool. Each pedal connects with a little, looks like RJ11 or maybe RJ9, kind of like a phone jack. And then there is our USB, which is also micro USB again. This one I think is less of a problem because there's these nice cable strain reliefs right here. How are you gonna screw this up? You're probably not going to. But once you plug this other end, here, let's, let's just demo. I don't know if it's the right way. If it was type C, it wouldn't matter. Oh, did I get it? Oh, I got it. All right, maybe it's not so bad. <laughs> I'm a professional plugger into port kind of guy, okay? I do this for a living. Okay, well, let's set it up with the computer and play some games. Oh my God. <sighs> but not before I tell you about our sponsor, Vessi. Thanks to Vessi Footwear for sponsoring this video. Vessi footwear is known for being lightweight, easy to pack, comfortable, and most importantly, water resistant with its Dymatex technology. Their everyday move line is designed with added support at the midsole and better breathability to keep up with your active lifestyle. You can take them off and put them on with ease thanks to the handy pull tab, and it's also made creature free, so every step you take will be guilt free. Your feet will thank you for wearing these, so say goodbye to wet socks and save 25 bucks with the offer code short circuit at vessi.com slash short circuit. When I was plugging in the power, I realized it's got active cooling. There's a fan in this thing. You can hear it, you totally can hear it. I felt it at the back, that's pretty cool. I guess it's because it's pretty hot. I like that everything is integrated in G-Hub now. You don't need to download discrete drivers, it just automatically detected it and it needs a firmware update. Hey look, it's got a little blinky lights when it's updating. It's not blinking anymore, sorry. God dang it, oh it blinked. It's blinking again. Oh, yeah that's a good amount of torque, I like this thing. We have a, Fanatec CSL DD2 upstairs, and I think that thing can do 25 newton meters, but I usually set the peak around 12. So having your peak at around 11 is, is pretty good. The interesting thing is they call these dual clutch pedals. Like that's the only, only car that would have paddles is one with a dual clutch. Okay, so maybe they're not talking about a dual clutch transmission. They're talking about there are dual clutch paddles. You can rebind them to pretty much anything, it looks like. Um, 
You can make them even your gas, I guess. So because it's a load cell, you can actually set the amount of force you apply. 100 kilograms. Ugh. There's no way you're going to be doing that without these mounted to a frame. And I don't even think you're going to be doing it even with it mounted to a frame. That's like 120 pounds of force. Uh, so you play it, the, the right pedal goes fast. The second pedal slows Wow, down. thanks. Hey, look, there's little bar graphs for them here. Gas and clutch, super linear clutch. I don't know what the other ones are. We're playing the new uh, Seto Corsa Competizione, I guess. I don't know, I don't speak Italian or whatever that is. It has true force support. That's why we're using it. I usually play regular Assetto Corsa, which we might try after, but uh, for now, let's do this. Okay, so I can pick a car. Let's do the M6 GT3. Ah, oh, it's so much easier to use a keyboard and mouse, damn it. Um, they're fine, I guess. Practice. Yeah, let's do that. Realism. Okay, let's try this thing. It's just like, you can hear the engine through the wheel. It's really weird. Sounds terrible. Yeah, it's a little like much sauce, honestly. I really don't like the, the true force. It feels awful. Just the whole wheel feels like it's just vibrating constantly. It sounds broken. Oh my God, it's not shaking like it's broken. This is so much better. Oh my God. Oh my God, I don't know why there's a racing line, but whatever. Okay. This is much better, this is much better. Oh my God, I'm going too fast for this car. Uh, so if you slow down four turns, you'll be able to take them. Yeah, it's a great idea, I should do that. Okay, it feels way better now that the whole desk and steering wheel isn't shaking like a cheap toy. Oh, too much spice. Okay, ow. See, that's what I mean, like there's some, there's some serious torque there. It's nice, it feels very crisp. The force feedback feels pretty good. I really did not like the true force thing in Assetto Corsa or ACC. Wow, this whole monitor is like shaking. This Ikea table was not built for racing sim. <laughs> it's a good amount of feedback. This is like as much as I would ever want. It's one thing with the Fanatec that I have, I'm always like, ah, I just want like a little bit more feedback. This is a little bit more, oh Jesus. Oh my God. <laughs> Feels pretty good for a $350 set of pedals. I'm, I'm pretty happy with those. Surprisingly usable on a table, despite the monitor like <laughs> going all over the place. It'll be interesting to see when there's more, more wheel options. I mean, the stock wheel feels pretty good. The build quality is nice. It's got, I would say, just the right amount of force feedback. I don't know if I'd want any more than this, but for $1,000, you gotta be pretty in to racing games to want to spend that much money and that's not including pedals if you look at the competition the csl dd with three pedals like this and a wheel is still less than just the base and the wheel thrustmaster just came out with their new direct drive base that can do 10 newton meters of torque for around 650 us dollars it still kind of seems like the csl dd from fanatec is the one to buy just because it is so much cheaper this does feel like a really good experience i don't like true force that much maybe other people do your mileage may vary but it does perform well it's just the price for a thousand dollars with a bunch of micro b ports kind of disappointing i don't know i think if i was buying one of these i'd probably still go with the fanatec csl dd with the boost pack because then you're pretty much in the same neighborhood in terms of torque for a lot less money and there's a lot more supported custom wheels, for instance. I'm sure Logitech is gonna come out with some more, um, but Fanatec has lots, and there's already a community behind them building other custom wheels. If this thing, if this thing were 500 bucks, I think it would be an absolute steal. For 750, maybe worth buying. I think this is just a little too expensive. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, maybe check out one of the watch videos I did, the Apple Watch Ultra. That thing was pretty cool, although also very expensive. Get subscribed. Goodbye.